Welcome to another When the Lights Go Out. Good evening, my little princesses. Good evening, my little knights. Another day has come and gone, and tomorrow is a new adventure. But now, are you ready for a bedtime story? This story is part two of the story of Princess Shirley. Now, do you remember last time? Shirley, the princess, and her mommy and daddy, the king and the queen, were escaping from their castle that was now on fire because of the bad king wanted to take all the land. And do you remember that the king's brother, Shirley's uncle, was a king in another land. And he said, come and live with me and you'll be safe. And so they had to get all their things ready and pack everything into the ship and sail across. But there was a big thunderstorm and the boat broke. Do you remember that? And do you remember that last time... We left the story. Shirley was on the beach and she'd woken up having passed out and she was alone except for a parrot and a sheep and her toy. So let's continue with the story. <clears throat> Once upon a time, Shirley, Princess Shirley, was on the beach and she'd just met the parrot who could talk. The parrot was called Master, the same as her toy. And so she just called him Master Parrot. And in fact, from there on, she just called him Master. Now, Master and Shirley started to walk along the beach to try and find out if anybody else was still alive. But they couldn't find anyone. Halfway up the beach, they did meet the sheep. And the sheep's name was Polly. So they had two animals, a parrot and a sheep, and Shirley and her toy parrot. So they walked along the beach, and the weather was very nice. It was a little bit warm, and the, there was a nice breeze of wind blowing across their face. And they saw something in the sand. And then they saw something else, and another one. And it was a box, and lots of boxes. Lots of wooden boxes that had come off the ship. Shirley ran and opened up the first box and it was full of rice and bread. And then she opened up another one and it was full of flour. And another one was full of knives and forks and spoons. And another one had some guns and big swords. And another one had lots of money and gold. And there was about 50 boxes washed up on the beach that were made of wood. So they floated all the way to the beach. There was bits of ship and some clothes and some shoes and, and all sorts of things. So Shirley, Princess Shirley, started to bring them from the beach out of the water and onto the sand where she could gather them all up. Because she knew that if she was going to survive and not die on the island, she had to get as much of the things out of the water as she could before they floated away again. And so she made a little place just up the beach where the sand met the jungle and she spent a whole day getting the boxes and all the things. She made sure that the gun that she found she kept on her in a pocket and she got enough bullets. And then she made sure that the food was in a nice, cool place. So it didn't go bad. And she found some fruit, which is quite nice, which is from the ship. So she sat down after about three hours and had a little drink and a banana, which is really nice. And she started to ask the parrots about the people on the ship. You see, the parrot had been flying around the island while, Sh while Shirley was bringing all the boxes up. But Master couldn't see anyone. There was nobody else 
No other person on the island apart from Shirley. Now that made Shirley both sad and happy. Happy because she knew that there weren't any crazy killing people that are going to eat her up or tie her up or put her in a tree. But she also felt sad because, well, because her mummy and daddy weren't there and not any of the cleaners or cooks or chefs or anybody that was on the ship. And she started to cry because she knew that she was here all by herself. But she had Master and she had Polly. And Polly the sheep came and sat down next to her and gave her a big hug. And the parrot gave her a hug and said, don't worry, it'll be okay. We'll find your mummy and daddy. I'm sure they're around somewhere. Maybe they're in a different island. Or maybe they were picked up by someone, someone else, in a different ship. But we'll find them. Don't you worry. And look at all the food and all the things that we've got here. You will be able to stay here for like as long as it takes. Maybe two months. So Shirley was quite happy now. Because she knew that she could at least survive on the island. And she also had a big gun. So she could protect herself in case some bad pirates came and tried to take her away. But it was starting to get dark now. And Shirley wanted to go to sleep, but she had nowhere to sleep. And so as quick as she could, the parrot and the Polly the sheep and Shirley got some wood and got some leaves and walked into the jungle just a little bit and made a very nice tent. She got some sticks and l laid them against a big tree and then <coughs> the parrot... Master got all the leaves from the other trees and made it like a green tent. Polly went to get all the dry grass from the other side of the island and brought it back so she could make a nice bed. And she'd actually been able to make a blanket from all the leaves. And so that night, Shirley had a very good sleep. There were some bugs and some mosquitoes, but it was okay because the bird ate them and flapped its wings to make sure the bugs went off. And so th the sheep and Master took turns to look after Shirley when she was asleep. So like the sheep would stay up for two hours and then Master would stay up for two hours and the sheep would have a sleep and they took turns looking after this little princess all alone, on an island, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the sea, without her mummy and daddy, and without anybody. And she was on the way to stay with her good uncle, the king, the nice king, while the bad king was trying to chase her and burn down the castle where she lived. But that night, Shirley had a bad dream. She dreamt about the fire in the castle and she dreamt about the storm and the ship breaking and she remembered seeing her mom's face screaming as they went into the water. She woke up and was crying and again the sheep and the parrots. Master and Polly told her it was going to be okay and that why don't we have a nice fire so we can make a cup of coffee. And so that's what she did. She got the matches and the lighter from one of the boxes. And then they got the old dry grass from around the island. And she made a little fire in the sand. She made it in the sand because if she made the fire in the jungle, maybe she would burn all the trees down. So to be safe, she just made it in the sand. Once the fire was going... She was able to put some water into a kettle and put the kettle on the fire until it steamed and was boiling hot. Then Master got her a cup and Polly put some coffee in. Uh, but they didn't have any milk, which was fine because she ate, she drank the coffee just black, I think. And so anyway, she sat there with a cup of coffee, a nice hot cup of coffee, and thought to herself as she looked out onto the 
vast blue ocean. What am I going to do here until somebody finds me? I know. I'll go and have a little exploration. I'll go and explore the island. And that's exactly what she did. She picked up the gun after she'd finished the coffee. She packed the big knife and the bag full of snacks and a bottle of water. And so she said to Master, I want to go and explore this island, see what there is. And so Master said, sure, come on then. And so Master sat on Shirley's shoulder, and Shirley and the parrot and the sheep started to go into the jungle. Now even though Master had flown around to see if there was anybody still alive, because the jungle had so many trees and the leaves were so tightly packed together, Master could not go and fly through the trees and into the jungle. So he said, be careful, because I still don't know if anybody's in here. The, par the parrot had flown around the island and was able to see that nobody was on the beach, and nobody was in the water, and nobody was up on just before you got into the jungle. But the parrot could not see through the trees, into the jungle. And so that's why he said, be careful. So Shirley kind of knew this, but she didn't really think about it. And they started to walk into the jungle. She had a knife in one hand, and a gun in the other, and enough food to last her for a couple of days, which was a good idea. And they started to walk into the jungle. As they were walking through the jungle, they heard a sound that was a bit scary. It was like... <coughs> and they stopped. And they looked over the branch and down the hill a little bit. And it was a family of pigs. Wild pigs with big tusks and horns coming out of their noses. The big daddy pig had really long sharp tusks and sharp teeth. The mommy wild pig had smaller ones and there was three little baby pigs with tiny cute ones and they thought hmm we can't really go down there and as they stepped to turn away a branch broke under the foot of Shirley <coughs> and the pigs looked up the hill straight at Shirley and the colourful parrot sitting on her shoulder and the daddy pig got very angry and his eyes were red and he screamed <coughs> Mommy Pig took the three little pigs back into their house into their little piggy house and daddy pig started to run at Shirley the parrot shouted run and so Shirley started running as fast as the little legs could carry her back to the beach. But the, but the wild pig was just too fast and he was just about to hit Shirley's bum with his big tusks. When the parrot, with all his might and all his power, grabbed Shirley's shoulders and lifted her up just enough. The wild pig missed her and smack bang right into a tree and knocked himself out and his head was spinning and he was like all over the floor and his legs were kicking. And then the parrot put Shirley back down and she was still running with her legs so she, she like hit the ground running and got back to the beach in about one second. Meanwhile, the pig, the wild daddy pig, had gotten back onto his legs, four legs, and stumbled, trip, stumbled, trip and fell over like three times and then rolled down the hill back to where his house was. Well, Mummy Pig thought this was rather funny and the three baby pigs thought it was very funny to see Daddy with a big bump on his head rolling down the hill back down to where they live covered in mud and being beaten by a little girl and a parrot. That made the Daddy Pig very angry but he knew that he was had to stay with his family to protect them, so he didn't want to go and chase the girl at the beach. Back down at the beach, Shirley caught a breath because she was, her heart was pounding almost out of her chest, and the parrot told her that they have to get prepared in case, just in case the wild pig ever tries to attack, 
And so that's what they did. They spent the rest of the time that day gathering sticks and using the knives to sharpen the edges of the sticks and then sticking them in the ground all around where the fire is and where they sat and all around where Shirley was sleeping so that if anything did ever come and try and catch her they would fall on the spikes or get caught with the spiky sticks and maybe die. And so that's what they did that day. After doing that, Shirley felt quite safe and the parrot said, I think that's quite safe. And so they ventured down to the water to find out if they could go swimming and maybe adventure a little bit into the water that way. Shirley had found some goggles, some swimming glasses in a box and so she put them on and she dived into the water. The water was crystal clear and very, very blue and all kinds of sea creatures were there. They had little octopuses and little fish and little angelfish and starfish and all these beautiful fish. Now the sheep and the parrot couldn't go into the water because parrots don't swim and sheep don't like getting wet. So she was all alone again but this time in the water. And she rather liked swimming through the water. And I think maybe that's why she didn't die when the ship broke, is because she could swim very well like a fish. As she was diving down, down, down into the water, something shiny caught her eye from the bottom of the water. She swam down and she picked up a little bracelet, a diamond bracelet, that she recognised. And then she realised the diamond bracelet was her mummy's bracelet that she was wearing the night that the storm broke. Could this mean that my mummy's disappeared and she's in the water? <gasps> or maybe something else, thought Shirley. But she didn't know. However, she took the bracelet and put it on because it was just the right fit. And she never took it off from that day on. And so she came back out of the water and started to make the dinner and thought about what can they do the next day. The end.